Our next speaker is Jessica Thompson, and the title of her talk is Elementary Science is Metamorphosis Towards Educational Justice. What would a radical transformation of elementary science education look like? Let me begin with a story from our research practice partnership with Seattle Public Schools. Last fall, I was in a kindergarten classroom where students were studying Mariposa Grove, a grove that was once abundant with caterpillars and butterflies, and then they all disappeared when a garden was built. The students drew scientific models to try and explain why the caterpillars disappeared, then gathered on a carpet. A young girl, Marisol, who had recently immigrated from Guatemala, told us her story in Spanish and English, her second and third languages, about how growing up in a rural farming community, she could see that caterpillars only eat particular kinds of plants. The teacher described how this day it was a transformation in the classroom where the students through pictures and storytelling and through the use of multiple languages, Marisol moved her thinking forward as well as the rest of the class did. We as researchers watching this episode thought this is our opportunity to understand how it is that children, when their ideas, when they present their ideas, they are authentically science ideas. And in this moment, we see teachers thinking carefully about how students, what their lived experiences are and how they can leverage them. We went back a month later and saw that now the students had robust arguments and explanations for how and why the caterpillars and butterflies and humans could coexist. Their stories helped us understand about what was possible. And importantly, the students, you know, many of you probably recognize the story that we're engaging kids in an issue of, of real gravity. Many of you probably know that butterflies are on a decline globally. So engaging kindergartners in these real issues at a very young age is important work. Not that we want them thinking about them in some distant future, but now. So as a part of this, Mar Marisol and her teacher are part of a larger transformation. It's not an individual classroom. We're partnering with this year with 250 teachers from Seattle Public, and we're growing to 1,400 teachers in the next two years. That's every elementary teacher in Seattle Public Schools. We are moving from a pedagogy of the oppressed to pedagogies of transformation, where we're not asking kids to learn scientific facts. We're asking them to engage in issues that have real gravity, that have things like climate change and species uh, uh, on that are on the decline and engaging in ideas of thinking about what could mass transportation look like. F children make up their mind about whether they're gonna go into the sciences by the time they're in the fourth grade. And so capturing the youngest of learners and engaging them in science is the most important work that we can do because we know that we want to engage all genders, all, all races, all linguistic backgrounds to be a part of seeing themselves in science and seeing themselves as people who can make change through science. We know that science doesn't always have the greatest history. When we think about uh, the actual harm that has been caused to women and people of color and those intersections, particularly those intersections. And so we're asking teachers to think critically with us about that and to look at their own classrooms to see where are these baked in biases into science and school science. We're developing, rather than just working with individuals, we're working with a whole community. We're building a networked improvement community where teachers gather together to look at student work and try and understand what are students' assets rather than their deficits. They're coming together to uh, examine their own biases and how, how that plays into classrooms. The teachers, we also have a teacher advisory board. And in the teacher advisory board, this is a team of teachers who are out videotaping their classrooms and then sharing videos with the rest of the network. We have a team of secondary science teachers who are helping with the content. And we have a, a set of leaders who are at the district who are deeply moving this week work forward. My co-PI on this, my co-principal investigator on this project, Mary Margaret Welch and her team, as well as we're partnering with every single uh, 
principal from the different dis from the different schools, and they're helping protect the time that we need for students to actually do science in elementary school. So, what go back to this question of what does radical transformation look like? It starts by shifting classrooms to being places that aren't just focused on facts, but are focused on c issues of consequential concern. It's shifting from classes that aren't just focused in, on English, but working on multilingual pedagogies. It's shifting from thinking about ignoring parts of history to embracing them and thinking about how do we have real conversations about them. It's thinking about not just working with individuals, but working with whole teams and networks and communities. Our goal is to work with every child in Seattle Public. There's something else special about butterflies. Not only do they undergo a radical transformation themselves, but every year they migrate in thousands, and they mi migrate thousands of miles. So our power is in the numbers as we think about moving forward. We are the largest transformation project that is happening in the country right now. So other districts are looking to us to try and understand what are, how, how does this transformation occur. We want to think with you tonight about how you could be a part of that. Because our next phase is to invite uh, families and communities to think with us about uh, these different units that we're developing in science education and how you can be a part of them. So I look forward to the conversations later.